In this video, let us understand what is graphing functions using transformations. So let's understand what is a transformation. Now consider an object like this. Now this object is the original object. Now we're going to transform this object into something else. This is called transformation. So the first transformation that we will do is a reflection. When you make a reflection, you get a mirror image of this object. So this is called reflection. The second aspect, the object is the same, but we are, this, this, this shape is the same, but we move the object to a different location. So that's called translation. Then the third is dilation. In dilation, what we do is two things can happen. One, you can compress it or you can stretch it. We can see that the object here is being compressed and here the object is being stretched. So this is dilation. So graphically, let's see three examples of reflection, translation and dilation. So first reflection. So for reflection, if f is the original function, then this line is called the line of symmetry. This forms a mirror image of this function. So if dash is a mirror image, so this is called the reflection. And in translation, let's say y is equal to f of mod x is the original function. Now this is x plus one. So the blue is the original function. Then x plus one mod is the green one. And you see that it has shifted to the left. And similarly, x minus one has shifted to the right. And it's interesting thing that you would see is when you add it with one, it shifts to the left. And when you subtract it with one, it shifts to the right. So this, we will see more of these examples as we go further. So this is translation. Then the last is dilation. So in dilation, let's say that y is equal to x squared is our original curve, the blue one. And y is equal to two x squared is a graph, which is, which, which is a which is a curve that is, you know, compressed, compressed towards the y-axis, away from the x-axis. Similarly, the red one, which is x squared by two, is again a dilation, but this is stretched far, away from the y-axis towards the x-axis. A proper definition can be given. The the reflection of the graph of a function with respect to line L is the graph that is symmetric to it with respect to L. So you have L as the line of symmetry. So it is symmetry and this, the both images form a reflection with, with, with respect to this line of symmetry. A reflection is a mirror image of the graph where L is the mirror of the reflection. So here we have three different functions. So let's say y is equal to f of x is the original function. So y is equal to minus f of x, y is equal to f of minus x, y is equal to f inverse of x. All these will be reflections of the graph y is equal to f of x. Let's see the illustration 1.5. Consider the function y is equal to x squared and then y is equal to minus x squared. So the blue graph is the y is equal to x squared and the red graph is the y is equal to minus x squared. So you can clearly see that it is a reflection. y is equal to x squared is a reflection of y is equal to minus x squared. Illustration 1.6. Let's consider the two graphs y is equal to x squared and y, sorry, y squared is equal to x and y squared is equal to minus x. Now, when y squared is equal to x, you will eliminate all the negative values. So you will get your y is equal to root x. y squared is equal to x is the same as y is equal to root x. So that's, a, that's the curve. Now, y squared is equal to minus x. So you will take all the negative values of x. So graphing that, that will be a reflection of y is equal to root x or y squared is equal to x. Similarly, in illustration 1.7, we have y is equal to e power x and the reflection of this is y is equal to log to the base e x. So that's the reflection.
Next, let's move on to translation. A translation of a graph is a vertical or horizontal shift of the graph that produces congruent graphs. All right. So first, if y is equal to f of x plus c, where c is greater than zero, causes the shift to the left. We already saw in the example when this is added by a value, it causes a shift to the left. And similarly, y is equal to x minus c causes a shift to the right. Then if y is equal to f of x plus d, then this causes a sh shift upward in the y-axis. And f of x is equal to my, sorry, y is equal to f of x minus d causes a downward shift. Well, illustration 1.8. Consider the functions y is equal to mod x and, or rather f of x is equal to mod x, f of x is equal to mod x minus 1 and f of x is equal to mod x plus 1. So if we graph these three, the first function which is y or f of x is equal to mod x is the blue graph, the blue line. Then x minus 1 is the red line. You see the shift has gone to the right. And the third is x plus 1 and the shift has gone to the left. In illustration 1.9, let's consider f of x is equal to mod x. Then f of x is equal to mod x minus 1. This is more or less like y is equal to the function minus 1. And this is mod x plus 1. This is function plus 1. So you see very clearly the original function is y is equal to mod x is here. The function plus 1 shifts to the upward direction one unit because it's plus one. So you see the green curve, the green line and the red graph is the, the, the red line is the x minus mod x minus one. So you can see the shift upward and downward. The third transformation that we are seeing here is dilation. Dilation is also a transformation which causes the curve stretches, which is expanding or compresses or contracting. Multiplying a function by a positive constant vertically stretches it or compresses it graphic, its graph. That is, the graph moves away from x-axis or towards x-axis. If the positive constant is greater than 1, the graph move, moves away from the x-axis. If the positive constant is less than 1, the graph moves towards the x-axis. So in illustration 1.10, we have the example here which is the, the function f of x is equal to x squared is given and here you see the constant is less than 1 as we've seen in the definition it is multiplied by half x squared so this is less than 1 and y is equal to 2 x squared the 2 is greater than 1 so let's see what happens in each of this case so in the first case when it is less than 1 which is half x squared you see that it is stretching further away from the y-axis towards the x-axis. Whereas in 2x squared, which is the green line, the, the green curve, it is moving towards the y-axis, so it is getting compressed. The original curve is the blue curve, which is y is equal to x squared. So a number less than 1, when you multiply the function with, it causes the curve to stretch far away from the y-axis. and and if you multiply the number by a value which is greater than 1, then it causes it to move towards the y-axis. In illustration 1.11, we will see further examples on translation. f of x is equal to x squared. So you have the blue curve, which is the original. f of x is equal to x squared. Now, x squared plus 1 is a translation, the function plus 1. So what happens is it shifts upward. In the y-axis we are adding one so it is shifting by one unit you can see the red curve so it's basically shifting upward and in the set in the last case where f of x is equal to x plus one the whole squared where x is added to one so in such a case it shifts to the left so it is translating towards the left as x is added by one illustration 1.12. So let's consider this y is equal to x squared minus 1 as our original function. So you have y is equal to 
x squared, which is sketched here. This is the curve. It's a parabola. Right. If I'm going to compress instead of 1, I'm replacing it with 4, which is I'm compressing the y-axis by 4 units. The x-axis remains the same. The y-axis is compressed. Then look at the second function, which is y is equal to 4 times x squared minus 1. So I'm multiplying the function by 4. But when I compress this y-axis and when I draw my curve, the curve looks exactly the same as the original function curve. However, if I expand it with a normal scale, then what happens is, like here, instead of 4, I have expanded it to 2. So, you can see that it's beginning to stretch. So, if we make, it, make this value as 1, then it'll get stretched even more or more, not stretched, it's compressed towards the y-axis. So, this causes it to compress towards the y-axis. And in the second scenario, where you have y is equal to 4x squared plus, sorry, minus 1. In such a case, when you draw that, you see this is our original curve and this is the curve that we get, we obtain. Now, you will see that the origins is the same, you know, where they actually uh, uh, at the lowest point, you can call that the minimum value of this function, you can call that, is the same at minus 1 and minus 1 for 0. But, however, the way they are both, you know, behaving on the graph is different. y is equal to 4x squared minus 1 tends to move more towards the y-axis, away from the x-axis. In illustration 1.13, we will see the sine curve fluctuation. So this is y is equal to sine x. We know the sine curve already. Now, if we replace the function with y is equal to 2x, sine 2x, then you can see the entire curve gets compressed. So in this uh, figure 1.62, you can see both of them are sketched together and you see how the second function y is equal to sine 2x is being compressed compared to y is equal to sine x. In illustration 1.14, if we're going to have a function y is equal to 2 sine x minus 1 plus 3, and then we start, you know, comparing with y is equal to sine x, and then start applying the function, you know, as we progress here. So this is y is equal to sine x. Then this is sine x minus 1. So you can see there is a shifting. The entire graph is being shifted for sine x minus 1. Then 2 times of sine x minus 1. Now the shifted graph is getting stretched. And then plus 3. So because it's plus 3, now the graph is shifted upward by 3 units. Thank you for watching Math Tutorial Anand. Please like and uh, you can comment if you have any questions and do not forget to subscribe to get more videos like this.